Good morning everyone! For today, we will be discussing about course. Before we start, let us know first the objectives of the lesson. We have here three objectives of our lesson. First, describe force in its nature. Second, compare contact from non-contact force. And third one, give examples of contact force and non-contact force. Okay, so as an example of our topic for today, I have here a picture of a child playing with his scooter. As you can see, he's really a good at it. He can even do tricks and stunts. It takes a lot of practice to be able to control a scooter like this. He automatically applies just the right forces to control his scooter. Okay, but what is force? Force is a push or pull upon an object resulting from the object's interaction with another object. Whenever there is an interaction between two objects, there is a force upon each of the objects. So when the interaction ceases or it stops, the two objects no longer experience the force. And there are several fundamental forces in the universe including force of gravity, electromagnetic force, and weak and strong nuclear forces. Now, let's go back with the first picture that I have shown you a while ago. Okay, so what are the forces acting on the child's scooter? First, we have gravitational force. Gravity keeps pulling both the child and the scooter towards the ground. Second, we have frictional force or friction force. Friction between the wheels of the scooter and the ground prevent the scooter from sliding but also slows it down. And the third one is applied force. So the child applies forces to his scooter to control its speed and direction. So, this means that force causes all motions. Every time the motion of an object changes, it's because a force has been applied to it. Force can cause stationary object to start moving or a moving object to change its speed or direction or both. So a change in the speed or direction of an object is what we call as acceleration. So looking at the picture of this child, He's getting his scooter started by means of pushing with his foot. Look at the child. So the force he applies to the ground with his foot starts the scooter moving in the opposite direction. So the harder he pushes against the ground, the faster the scooter will go. Okay. So, how much an object accelerates when a force is applied to it? depends not only on the strength of the force, but also on the object's mass. For example, a heavier scooter would be harder to accelerate, so the child would have to push with more force to start it moving and move it faster. Okay, so next, let us go now with force as a vector quantity, magnitude, and direction. When we say force is a vector, it means that it is a measure having both size of force and direction. Magnitude means the size of force. For example, a child pushes the scooter on the ground in the opposite direction that the scooter moves. So that's the direction of the force he applied. He can give the scooter a strong push or a weak push. That's the size of the force. Like other vectors, a force can be represented with an arrow. Okay, so I have here two groups. Okay, so group 1, having force A and B, same as with group 2, having force A and B. So this force A and B are two forces being applied in two groups. Okay, so the first group shows that the two forces applied in the same direction going to the right okay shows that force b 
is stronger than force A. While in group 2, the forces being applied okay, goes in the opposite direction wherein it oh they have equal okay equal forces so how could you use arrows to represent the forces that started the child's scooter to move around to move okay so the child pushes against the ground behind him the ground pushes back with equal force going to the left causing the scooter to move in that direction okay so now let's go now with two types of forces there are two types of forces on what we call as the contact and non-contact force but before that let us know first combining forces what are combining forces okay so i have here an example of picture showing combining forces okay so these are group of students boys and girls playing tag of war okay so the two teams are pulling the rope in opposite directions okay so which team do you think will win okay so it depends on which side pulls on the rope with the greatest force of course okay so next picture i have here force in the same direction as an example of combining forces so if two forces acting an object acting on an object in the same direction like on the picture the net force is equals to the sum of the two forces so how are we going to get the force acting in the same direction we are just going to uh add okay so we are going to add the force of the woman on the left picking up the couch. She pushes the couch to the right with the force of 25 newtons, while the man on the right will pull the couch to the right with a force of 20 newtons. So if we add them both or we add them, we will have the answer as 45 newton going to the right okay so next example again of combining forces are forces acting in the opposite direction okay as you can see i have here a table okay where you can see that the uh, book a book being placed on the top of the table okay so in general whenever forces act on an object in opposite directions like the book on the table so the net force is equal to the difference between the two forces. In other words, one force is being subtracted okay, from the other to calculate for the net force. Okay, so if the opposing forces are equal or balanced, the net force will be zero or as it is for the book. Okay, so that's why the book doesn't fall to the ground. Instead, it remains resting on the table. Okay, so next picture will be another example of opposite direction. Forces acting in the opposite direction. We have here two dogs. They are playing. Okay, they are pulling. Also playing tug of war. The other one's somewhat smaller than the other. Okay. So the, the first dog has 10 newton while the other one has 12 newton. So to get the, for, uh, the net force of these two dogs, okay, we need to subtract them. So 12 newton minus 10 newton, will, we will get 2 newton going to the right. Okay, so next picture we have here, force acting perpendicular to each other. This is an example of a person carrying three boxes. So when we say forces acting perpendicular to each other, so two forces are per perpendicular to each other, their resultant vector is drawn so as to make a right angle triangle. So in other words, the resultant vector is hypotenuse of the triangle. Okay. So, kinds of force. We have contact force. 
and non-contact. What are contact forces? Contact forces are those types of forces that result when the two interacting objects are perceived to be physically contacting each other. Okay, so examples of contact force, we have frictional, tensional, normal, air resistance, and applied forces. Okay, so examples of contact force, we have here an applied force. What is an applied force? Applied force is a force that is applied to an object by a person, like this child pushing uh, his mother. Okay. If a person is pushing a desk, for example, or a person, another person across the room or across the road, then there is an applied force acting upon the object. So the applied force is the force exerted okay, by that person. So a force can be applied to another object by a direct push or pull or drag. Okay, so next example, we have here elastic force when we say elastic force it is a type of force that acts to return okay example a spring returning to its natural length okay so an ideal spring is taken to be massless uh frictionless unbreakable infinitely stretchable okay so next one frictional force what is frictional force it refers to the force generated by two forces that contact that contacts and slide against each other so a few factors affecting the frictional force okay so these fo forces are mainly affected by the surface texture and amount of force impelling them together okay so we have here another one and contact force those types of forces that result even when the two interacting objects are not in physical contact with each other yet are able to exert push or pull despite their physical separation so what are the examples of non-contact force we have gravitational electrical and magnetic force so i have here a paratrooper as an example for force due to gravity okay next one we have electrical force as an example we have the comb together with the paper and next one, we have magnetic force regarding batteries. Okay, so the north and the south poles. Okay, so these are the different examples of uh, forces. Okay, so thank you very much for listening. I hope you've learned something from our discussion today. Thank you and God bless.